female's doing a little dance. She's releasing up to 100,000 eggs where they hatch on contact with water and the larvae swim away. We spent about the last three weeks migrating, so a week walking down to the coast and two weeks in the burrow incubating their eggs. All leading up to this moment. And that's really cool to see. <laughs> We have about 40 million red crabs on Christmas Island. They live most of their year up in the forest in the middle of the island. But once a year they have to return to their roots at the ocean in order to breed. So it, it's quite a prolonged, drawn out journey. And the crabs face quite a few obstacles. Not just cliffs and other natural obstacles. Behind me is one of the main ways that we protect the crabs on Christmas Island. So we close a lot of roads during the migration and this just allows the crabs free access to cross the road without getting hit by cars. And as you can see they are making good use of it but in areas where we can't close the roads because people still need to access them we have a range of techniques that we use to get the crabs safely across. Feeling crabby? Yeah. <laughs> we have an army of volunteer and national parks freakers just moving the crabs out of the roads in front of the cars as they come through. Hot, exhausting work, but we're saving a lot of crabs. School bus is arriving, and yeah, the kids will be getting out here and walking to school today. Just to avoid running over all the little crabbies on the road. This is where I live. It's a three-story building right next to the ocean, and every year it just gets covered in crab. On the way, they'll just go over any kind of obstacles there are. In this case, might be a set of stairs. Nothing stops them. Eight legs, they can climb over anything. <laughs> Yeah, he's climbing up the bricks. <laughs> this is our local bakery. Crabs obviously like the smell of fresh bread fruit. Every year the whole town gets overrun by the crabs. People find them in their beds, in their showers. This is one of our temporary fences. We put these up about a month before the rains start. Um, and they're designed to divert the crabs around roads so that they can cross in a safe spot. This is one of about 20 crab crossings that we have across the island. So the crabs go underneath the road and the cars go over this cattle grid on the road. And you can see here um, we have a little concrete culvert that directs the crabs to this point. The crabs have to wait for the rains to start because they still have some connections to the ocean. They need some moisture in their gills in order to breathe. So if it's too hot and dry, they can't really wander too far from their burrows. Not all the crabs are gonna make it, despite everything we do to try and get as many across the roads as safely as possible. Some inevitably get squished, but they don't go to waste. The other crabs will uh, stop and have a snack on them on the way, replenish their moisture and get some much needed nutrients to continue their journey. Another one of the methods that we use to help the crabs cross the road safely our uh, crab bridge. And it's on this section of road because we can't actually put underpasses on this road just because of the utility pipes along the edge. Where they climb all the way to the top, over to the other side, and then climb down on the other side. Unfortunately, traffic isn't the only hazard that the crabs face. In really long, open, hot stretches like big lawns, and even if they get stuck on the side of the road in the gutter, they can die of dehydration. Usually one day each month where the tides are right and the females are able to release their eggs into the ocean. And that's usually in the last quarter of the moon uh, on a neap tide. It's about 4.30 in the morning and these females are trying to spawn. So the swells up a bit. This is what it's all about. So there's yeah, probably about 100,000 eggs in here. The females tried to release it into the ocean but they didn't quite get it because it's, they're up on the cliff. But if we release it into the water, they'll hatch. And the larvae will hatch and still away. Really cool. Out in the ocean, they're prey to lots of different filter feeders like whale sharks and manta rays, plop the little fish. But if they're lucky and the tides and currents don't wash them away, they might actually come back in three to four weeks. On those special years, the whole island is painted red. There's just a sea of red crabs heading from the ocean back up into the forest. Oh, little babies! It's pretty 
spectacular and it makes everything that we've been doing so far just completely worth it.